I cannot tell you my feelings when I found I could not see you before you left. Yet I expect you can realize them. I think when they had the opportunity, they loved being together. They were companions, true companions. They liked to be doing active things. Any time they could, any chance they could, they'd go on a horseback ride together. Or if the weather was just right, they would get out in a sleigh. And I know that that brought them joy. If you want to know how much I want to see you, examine your feelings, how much you want to see me, and judge for yourself. I would gladly walk from here to you, barefoot and bareheaded and half-naked to see you and think it great pleasure and never count it toil. To think that the time that they spent together was was always easy and smooth sailing is, is simply a naive concept. Do they have any of the normal frustrations of family life? Of course, all of them. When you look at the history of Joseph and Emma together, there were relatively few blocks of time when they were together for long periods. That simply didn't happen. Joseph was gone much of the time. Sometimes he was gone most of the time. Joseph carried a huge proportion of the responsibility for the church on his own shoulders. There were very few people he could really rely on. And this meant he had to travel to Missouri. He went to Canada, he went to Salem, Massachusetts, he went to Michigan. And not just for an overnight trip, but for months he would be gone. She uh, has a lot of independence and she had to. She had to be able to stand her ground because there was many times when Joseph was not around. And she had to be the person uh, to hold things together. And so a great burden would have been left on her every time he was absent. You may be astonished at my bad writing and incoherent manner, but you will pardon all when you reflect how hard it would be for you to write when your hands were stiffened with hard work and your heart convulsed with intense anxiety. But I hope there are better days to come to us yet. I am ever yours affectionately, Emma Smith. Most of the times, she had to draw upon her own strengths in order to survive because he had to be somewhere else. Emma can manage accounts. She can manage boarders at the house. She can manage the children. She was the breadwinner. She was the housekeeper. She was the mother. She was the teacher of the children, the educator, the disciplinarian, the person who had to basically pack up and move the family when necessary. She bore the brunt of all of that. He has letter after letter written to Emma saying that he wishes that he could be home with her, that he's praying that the Lord gives her comfort and that the saints around her take care of her. I hope you will excuse me for writing this letter so soon after writing, for I feel as if I wanted to say something to you to comfort you in your peculiar trial and present affliction. I hope God will give you strength that you may not faint. I pray God to soften the hearts of those around you, to be kind to you, and take the burden off your shoulders as much as possible, and not afflict you. But the remarkable thing is, when he came back again, they picked up as if they, where they had left off from before. Throughout most of their life together, Emma really was um, his, his good friend. She cared about Joseph. She counseled with Joseph. You know, their relationship, I, as far as I can tell, was one of openness, sharing, discussing. Joseph confided more to Emma than anyone. With emotions known only to God do I write this letter. The contemplations of the mind under these circumstances defies the pen or tongue or angels to describe or paint to the human being who never experienced what we experience. Those letters speak of a married pair who are opening their hearts to one another in every way. And that kind of openness, where you just open your hearts to one another, that builds confidence and trust. I shall not attempt to write my feelings altogether for the situation in which you are, the walls, bars and bolts, rolling rivers, running streams, rising hills, sinking valleys, and spreading prairies that separate us. 
and the cruel injustice that first cast you into prison and still holds you there. The love they felt seemed to reach beyond those challenges and those spiritual convictions were surely what held them together when most marriages would have crumbled. As they both were trying to establish the church, as she was the support system and he was the prophet of God, even though there was massive trials and tribulation, I think when they were together, their association, they were happy and they were joyful. And it's because they uh, were so solid in their relationship one with another. There was a time that Joseph was in prison and asked if she could bring blankets. That was the only thing he needed. And she wrote back sorrowing that she couldn't bring him any blankets because she only had the one for her and the children because everything else had been stolen by people that she thought had been friends. And when he realized what was going on with his wife, that's when he said to the Lord, where is the pavilion of thy hiding place? Uh, it wasn't his sacrifices. It wasn't his uh, being in jail. It's when he learned what was going on with his wife that he really petitioned the Lord. And I think that shows you the great concern and love he had for her and for the children. My dear Emma, I think of you and the children continually. If I could tell you my tale, I think you would say it was altogether enough for once to gratify the malice of hell that I have suffered. I want to see little Frederick, Joseph, Julia, and Alexander, Joanna, and old Major. It would have been excruciatingly difficult to lose as many children as they lost. They had 11 children, um, six of whom had died. And Joseph helped her understand that the plan of salvation that had been unfolded to him helped her to know that nothing was final in this life. He was a great support to her in helping her know that she would have her children again. They suffered a lot of tragedy, deaths of children, but they, they did really rejoice in the children that they did have. The joy of Joseph and Emma when they had a first living child had to have been the, the most supreme experience for them. When they wrote back and forth to each other, one of the preoccupations of their letters is their children. Joseph's letters are filled with these little expressions of affection. Kiss their little cheeks, pat their heads, tell them to be good. And you got the feeling that he was deeply invested in those children. Oh God, grant that I may have the privilege of seeing once more my lovely family in the enjoyment of the sweets of liberty and social life. To press them to my bosom and kiss their lovely cheeks would fill my heart with unspeakable gratitude. Emma, tell the children that I am alive and trust I shall come and see them before long. Joseph enjoyed playing with the children especially in stick poles and wrestling. In fact, Joseph was sometimes reprimanded for being too playful and that he wasn't somber and serious enough for a prophet. There's a story of a, one occasion when Joseph excused himself from the gentleman that he was having meetings with and went out and slid on the ice with his children. He could have become entirely a public man, but he was a private man. He spent time at home and he was interested in those kids and he let it be known. I returned to my room to meditate and calm my mind and behold, the thoughts of home, of Emma and Julia, rushes upon my mind like a flood, and I could wish for a moment to be with them. 